This is the Business of Apps podcast, bringing you actionable insights from the leaders of the global app industry and the world's fastest growing apps. You can find more app news, data and analysis over at businessofapps.com. Welcome to Business of Apps podcast. On this show, we invite app industry professionals to cover various topics. We promise to do our best to keep it both insightful but brief. On this episode, we have Jide Maduaka, CEO of Yoke Network. Welcome to the Business of Apps, uh, Jide. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. So, question to the audience. Okay, try to remember where and how did you shop 10 years ago? Can you remember <laughs> what was the trajectory of you as a buyer? How did you discover a particular brand? Uh, you were Googling up, you went straight to Amazon... Most likely, you were opening a particular brand website to discover a product or service. Probably you saw it on the big board next to your local mall or so the TV commercial or something. What about now? How do you show up these days? Do you go straight to Amazon? Do you search for something particular in Google? What about Pinterest? Shopping on Instagram? Well, perhaps all of the above. So today, the way people discover new brands and their products has changed a lot. Now, does influencer marketing term ring a bell for you? Do you know what it is? Well, today with Jita, we will walk you through what influencer marketing is, where is it now, and where it's heading to. But before doing all that, uh, Jita, please tell our listeners a bit about yourself, your background. Okay. Hi. Hi, guys. Um, so my name is Jide Madawaka. And I'm London born and bred, so originally of like Nigerian heritage. I'm the CEO and co-founder of the Yoke Network. And we launched in 2018 to essentially create a platform for performance influencer marketing. But we've since branched out into influencer content creation for native ads. So that's influencers creating content that can be repurposed onto like Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, native ads. And mostly a lot of our work has been now running TikTok influencer campaign. So this is helping brands and apps to establish their presence on TikTok as a platform, which I believe is going to be, it's the biggest opportunity for advertisers since Instagram. So that's a bit about myself and um, like my background. All right, great. Thanks. Okay, let's start with the basics. What is influencer marketing? Give us a thumbnail sketch what it is. So... Simply put, the way that we define influencers is an influencer is somebody that has an audience of over 10,000 followers. That's specifically for Instagram. But we'd say like an influencer on TikTok is somebody who has an audience of over 100,000 followers. So these are people that are following or subscribing to their profile slash their channel, really. So I heard this term micro-influencers. Who are they? Well... Micro-influencers are essentially the, the lower end. So it's those influencers with like 10K followers or, or less. And these are, these are influencers who, who don't have the, a massive reach, but they still have a lot of persuasion and power within their small audiences. Mm-hmm. So that's what I describe as, an, as a micro-influencer. And there's a lot more micro-influencers than there are like macro-influencers or celebrities that you could say. All right, got you. So probably you've heard a lot about uh, influencers uh, just in general, uh, you write about it online, but why influencer marketing is so effective for brands and what are business verticals for which it works really well? Can you give us a few? Yeah. So um, influencer marketing generally, it, it works really, really well for e-commerce. And influencer marketing, the reason why it is so effective is because it is like word of marketing at scale. Uh, because generally when you're working with influencers, essentially what it is is that word of mouth marketing is you being recommended something by somebody that you know or trust. And that's the most mm-hmm. powerful form of marketing because you're going to go out and actually execute or actually go and test out that product or maybe buy a product. <laughs> But with influencers, these are people who have an audience that follows them. They trust what they have to say. They they watch their life. They are people who are uh, revered within amongst their followers, or at least their followers take interest in what they do and say. 
So the reason why influencer marketing is so effective and at times it can be more powerful than word of mouth marketing is because these influencers have the trust of their audience and anything they do recommend is, um, works at scale. And in terms of uh, it, the types of verticals it also works for, we've seen that like, with apps, usually reward apps. So like apps that like give uh, their audience something in return. Uh, influencer marketing really works there. But the best way and the most effective way that influencer marketing can work is when the audience fits. So health and fitness influencers with like health and fitness apps or mm -hmm. like sports influencers and sports apps or just as long as there is an audience fit with the app or and the influencer's audience, then it's something that will work really, really, really well. So there's negative engagement being generated because influencers, they're talking about things they're really passionate about. There's no, there's no room for faking. It's about authentic, true emotions, true needs being fulfilled by a specific product or service. That's why they resonate so much with their, uh, their followers, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, if you're an influencer and your audience always sees that you're in the gym and they follow you because the content that you're posting is about health and fitness, but then you start to talk about something completely different, like politics, for example, in your uh -huh. politics app, that's not going to work because that they're going to think, well, I don't, I don't follow you for that. I don't, that's not why I'm interested in what you have to say. And that essentially is, isn't going to work. But if, when you put products in like with a health and fitness influencer and it's a health and fitness product, if, if their audience hasn't been saturated and like the content that they've created works perfect, to, like it's very, has a clear message, then it can, it can work really, really, really well. And we've seen some amazing results up so. I see. So it's about authenticity in trust. Now, let's, let's uh, switch the equation. Can you think of any downsides of influencer marketing um, in general, like downsides for e-commerce, for brands? Can you? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, influencer marketing, obviously you've heard the horror stories of, of brands or, or apps spending tens of thousands and, and not getting any results. But I think influencer marketing, firstly, before you even try it or execute upon it, you need to know what you're looking, like what result you're looking to get. And then that would then help you to manage the expectation of the campaign. Because um, we've spoken to different brands. They will look at influencers, not even to get their reverse. They're looking at influencers more for brand awareness or they or other brands. They actually profitably can advertise for influencers. But the most of the time it works when there's like uh, a misalignment of the audience, which is number one. Uh, if the advertising is like really inauthentic, like I've always seen like if, if somebody's doing like hashtag ad, there's no creativity in the content, then you see it work horribly well, horribly bad, like uh, really, really bad. And also when there is like a lack of scale. So uh -huh. sometimes if there's like influence and marketing being done with micro influencers and there's not enough, then it's not going to convert too well, have the results that you want. But if it's like done with a really big influencer, that's probably more effective. So um, influencer marketing, uh, really, really the main thing I'd say is that um, it it can go horribly wrong, but if it's done uh, with a, a good, well thought out formula, then it can go amazingly well. Right. Uh, I see. Well, just one more thing. What about conflicts of interests? Let's say... On the same week, I'm as an influencer marketing promoting two different brands for cosmetics, uh, but they're so similar. Are there any roles? How do you reconcile these cases when similar brands are trying to approach the same influencer? And can you see the how you can reconcile this situation? Yeah, well, obviously, you don't want the audience to be saturated. So, like, if an influencer is, like... It, it really does depend on like, the t there's a lot of variables that do go into it. So it could be like the time of day, um, mm -hmm. or, it, or even if it's like the type of creative, because the brand that is, if there's two similar brands and the second brand might outperform the first brand just because the creative was done really well. But I think that, um, as well, like, as long as there's a common like tone of voice, I think influencer marketing, works well when you work with an influence over a longer period of time. That's when it works best. So I think 
that will help brands to avoid the confliction of like two adverts from similar brands in the same week. And also I think the type of influencer, I think a really big influencer or one that, that is going to perform well, they're not going to try and advertise two of the same brands at the same time because that doesn't make sense to them either. And it makes them look like they're just trying to get money instead of like recommending cool products to their audience. I think that the way to avoid it is by obviously watching the influencer and doing your proper due diligence on them. And then two is also like coming, making sure that the creative is done really well, and not like restricting the influencer um, and, and stifling their creativity. Okay, gotcha. Now, what about TikTok? How is it different from influencer marketing perspective? Why is it better, probably not better, but so different from, you know, doing influencer marketing campaigns on Instagram, on Pinterest, YouTube? Mm, well, definitely, I, I definitely think that TikTok is a massive opportunity for advertisers. But And, and the reason why I love TikTok and why it's different from like other platforms is because TikTok is all about the creator. It's not about the status. It's not about who the person is. It's all about the creativity. So what you see on TikTok is that somebody may go viral and they don't have that many followers, but the content is like phenomenal. And and I think TikTok has unearthed a world of creativity because it's so easy to chop and edit and to add effects to the videos that it allows anybody to look uh, amazing. So um, that's the difference I think with Instagram. Instagram is all about who you are what the aesthetic there's a lot of unauthentic like photo tune or face tune and yeah, uh, editing sure. photos on instagram you know so uh -huh. i think with tiktok it's just you can be who you want to be you can let your hair down you can be like free so um I, I, we haven't really done much work on um, on pinterest but i know with tiktok as well compared to youtube as well which allows you to be quite free is that um tiktok you still need like photo editing so you need like Adobe, like Photoshop or Adobe uh, Premiere to like edit a, a YouTube video. So that mm -hmm. again is like creating like a short film. But with TikTok, it's mobile first, it's in your hand. So, I, and because it's shorter form content, um, in comparison to YouTube, TikTok is probably my favorite. It's, it's really good. I love it. I see. Is it true that you can actually go viral with, you know, one, two videos on your channel within hours, within a day on TikTok? Yeah, yeah definitely. Like with TikTok, it's, um, because of the way the algorithm is set up, it's all about like the content. And I've seen the profiles of about 300 followers have over 3 million views, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for TikTok, because it's all about the creator and it's all about the creativity in the video. Mm -hmm. But then you might end up seeing that like over time, as there's more advertisers and as there's more eyes and more different types of content on TikTok, that doesn't happen as much. And um, but for someone like Instagram, because it's like a paid media channel now and it's not like a social media platform, mm -hmm. it's harder to go viral. But TikTok's still in its early stages, especially in the Western market. So you do get that organic reach. Yeah, it's um, amazing. I, I remember reading... A quote from somebody from the upper management on Instagram who was telling that, well, TikTok managed to pull this off. Like we could only imagine we were trying to nail it down, but TikTok finally made it. And uh, it's just uh, amazing yeah. to watch from the outside how they're doing it. Uh, um, I think it's phenomenal. Like the growth as well, they were like the second highest uh, downloaded app in 2019, I think. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, it's just, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. So it's something to watch and make sure you're, as an advertiser, you're there. Great. It's phenomenally popular in China. What about other countries? Can you think of any, like, US probably the usual suspect is the yeah. most, is the most popular, right? Well, yeah. So China is their biggest market, clearly. And then next is, I think, India and then the US. Mm -hmm. uh, it's mm -hmm. one or the other. But, um, They're, those are the three biggest markets um, for TikTok uh, in Europe, which I know I think TikTok look at Europe as a whole and the UK. Like TikTok in um, in in Europe is also growing really fast, and in the UK, it's got a large audience. Um, so so it's huge. It's, it's it's huge across the world. 
I think they have over 500 million monthly active users. So there are a lot of eyeballs on the platform. And you see like celebrities as well now jumping on like, I think Kylie Jenner joined TikTok the other day. Justin Bieber is now on, Will Smith. Like these are all the most, like the largest celebrities in the world are using the platform now. So it's giving it that real credibility too. Yeah, exactly. Once you have the, the not like the first, the biggest stars, people who are really huge celebrities on other platforms so on TikTok, it gives us more and more momentum to get more and more folks joining. Probably the last is a small question about the TikTok, but about the um, statistics. I heard that it's not like a statistics for advertising campaign you're running on TikTok. It's not that sophisticated as the one that's how uh, Instagram or Facebook provides. Yeah. So you mean that in terms of the advertising? Yeah, for from the an native, advertising right? perspective, if you're running a campaign on TikTok as yeah. an advertiser, the stats you're getting are not that sophisticated as the Facebook ones, right? Yeah. So that there's now. Well, there's two. There's two. There's a few types of campaigns that you can run on TikTok. So there's obviously the larger hashtag campaigns that you can do. Um, and where you can get like a brand takeover. Um, there's mm -hmm. also the native, uh, there's also the native advertising platforms where campaigns that you can run when you work with and you partner with influencers, um, to then, uh, for them to ad advertise your brand. In terms of, uh, working on TikTok as a platform, it is, it is early doors. It's in its early stages, but the actual native ads platform looks almost identical to Facebook's. Uh, so it's very simple for advertisers to use and then run it in. But I think what actually like the type, the biggest difference is like the, the links outside for like the influencers. So there isn't that, there isn't direct response for influencers. There isn't like not every influencer has the link in bio. So that's where it gets a bit more difficult doing influencer campaigns. And even with the native feeds, there's, there's quite uh, a lot of restriction on the type of content that you can create for the native ads. So mm -hmm. it, it get I, I think working with like an agency or working with somebody who is a TikTok expert to to help you guide you along the process in this early stages is probably the best route to take. But um it does it does work um really well in you know, um and it's it's smooth to use. Right. So it is at this point you definitely need help of a pro professional. Okay, so yeah. uh, what about trends do you see for influencer marketing this year, this twenty twenty? So the biggest trends that I think is that I'm seeing from advertisers that a lot of them are focused on TikTok, either for native or for influencers. So I think that this year, a lot of advertisers are going to try to understand it a lot more. And um, there's going to be, they're going to be investing in different types of campaigns on the platform. Mm -hmm. Um, I also see our uh, brands getting a better understanding of like TikTok and there's, um, emerging platforms like Trilla that are coming. Um, it's very similar to TikTok, um, but they're, they're US company. Um, mm -hmm. and with Trilla, they're, they're actually launched their own ad platform as well. Then I also see a lot more brands and apps actually building their influencer teams in house. Or so like essentially, I think that for like when working with agencies, it's all about the value that they're going to add, uh, to your team, uh, and how they're going to, and how agencies will plug into to um your team as an advertiser so i think this year definitely um short form video platforms are gonna continue to grow and that's where advertisers are gonna start to invest a lot more in. all right great and now i have a few rapid fire questions to you so are you on ios or android side ios <laughs> ios all right so you never tried android you just uh went ios and um, look back I'll be honest, uh, I will never, I cannot see a future where I would be using Android. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, yeah. that's a very fair answer and we're on the same page. I'm, I'm from the same pay, uh, camp as you are. What about your very first mobile phone? Can you still remember what it was? Yeah, my first mobile phone, I think it was a Nokia 3510, I think. So it was a while back, over about 10 years ago, or even for several ten years ago, I remember I had it when I was in school. <laughs> okay, uh, let's let's get back to reality. What what is your favorite app, and why? My favorite app is TikTok. That's basically because I I love the creativity on the platform, and it's a mm -hmm. lot more refreshing 
than um, Instagram. I must say I spend most of my time on Instagram, but my favorite app is TikTok just because I enjoy the content there more. TikTok, on uh, Instagram, I use it more for like messaging and like, mm-hmm. speaking with my friends and group chats and stuff. All right, then that was kind of an uh, interesting question. Let's see if you can answer it. What is the most overrated app? Like the app uh, that there's so much hype about, but you believe that just doesn't deserve it. Now you say it doesn't deserve it. Well, I think that WhatsApp, funny enough, uh-huh. I think that as a messaging app, like it's very average because uh, even like WhatsApp for business, like it doesn't really have many additional features and benefits and the product has stayed very, very flat line. I think like a messaging app like Telegram is a lot, has a lot more features and is a lot better than WhatsApp. But obviously WhatsApp's like the most widely used. So that's why a lot of people are on it. But I don't really, I don't really like being on it, which is, which is weird to say. <laughs> I see. All right. What about new app technologies are you most excited about? So in terms of app technologies, I'd say more in terms of an app category. I'm um, very interested in like AR apps and like AR, AR games as well. Um, because I'm really excited to see like, how that will be integrated into like game and how it's going to grow. Because you saw obviously the success of that like, Pokemon Go a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, you also look at Snatch, which is a really, really cool app, which is like an AR, AR app. But also I think like um, AR being integrated into like messaging apps or like, for example, like Skype or like um, even WhatsApp as much as I don't like it. Like uh, for the video call side, I think integrating like AR for B2B would be really good because then you could like present like different things when you're on a business call and you can walk through like decks and stuff. I think that's something that I'll be, I'd love to see, you know? All right. And now before I let you go, how people can get in touch with you and get more information about what you guys do. Okay. Okay. So um, in terms of getting in touch with me for business, I'm on LinkedIn. So um, you can just type in Yoke Network, which is Y-O-K-E, uh, Network, N-E-T-W-O-R-K. So you can find me there on, on LinkedIn. And if you're just generally interested in uh, what I'm up to on a day-to-day, today's life on Instagram, <laughs> which is as much as I use it the most, um, I'd say like uh, that's where I post. I, I try to post that motivational content to show people like, I'll get an insight into what I'm actually doing as well. And that's J-I-D-E-S-L-I-F-E uh, on Instagram too. All right. Great. Thanks a lot for your time and coming to our podcast, Jideh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. And that was Jideh Maduaka, CEO of Yoke Network. To listen more episodes, subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. Just search for Business of Apps and you will find us easily. Once you subscribe, you will be able to get new episodes on your smartphone, tablet, or computer as soon as we release them. And please don't forget to leave us a review and comment. It is highly appreciated. And all episodes will also be available on businessofapps.com. Till the next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Business of Apps podcast. For more, head on over to businessofapps.com.